Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. My name is Jeffrey and I'll be your host. Today is part three of our musicals podcast. So of course I have Ingrid Sorensen here with me as my guest. We've, we've done a, a long haul so far, so hopefully part three is what you guys are looking for. If you missed part one and part two, we discussed 1776 and Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. So Hamilton wraps up our, our third musical, and we'll see how this one goes. Before we get started with the details of Hamilton, I think Ingrid had a funny story that she wanted to tell us. Take it away. Yes, I did. And I just, <laughs> I just wanted to thank you again for inviting me to be a guest on the podcast. It's always a lot of fun, and I hope you and the viewers are enjoying it as well. Um, so, fun fact about Hamilton and me. Um, and it's like a very funny story I tell people because they just can't believe it, especially in hindsight, right? History is always fun. So originally the musical was supposed to run in Chicago from September to December of 2016. And for those of you that may have not listened to it on earlier podcasts, I live in the Chicagoland area. Um, due to its growing popularity, you know, all of the weekend shows pretty much sold out right away. So after work, when I got home, I logged into Ticketmaster and the only tickets available were basically weekday tickets, which run from Tuesday to Friday, basically in uh, Chicago. So um, it was in July, you know, I picked tickets for a Tuesday showing in November, and little did I know, because it was so far in advance, that it was Tuesday, November 8th, which happened to be Election Day uh, in 2016. So that date will forever be ingrained in my mind, and I will never, ever forget it. <laughs> yeah, that, that day has probably several meanings for you. Yes, it was, yeah, just say like America changed and um, I saw Hamilton. So it's a, it's a very interesting day and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> or memorable yeah, to say the least. Definitely a mixed bag. And for, for me, that was the first election that I voted in back home after university. So it was definitely different for me too. But at least you got to see Hamilton. I didn't even get, get, get to do anything fun. Yeah, it was um, really interesting because during intermission, they had an announcement for the updates and then there was the one at the end. Um, so seeing people's reaction in theater in live time was very fascinating because, you know, obviously you're not checking your phone when it's yeah. going on. So it was, an, it was a very memorable day, memorable day to say the least. So I will never forget Tuesday, November 8th of 2016 and where I was when I found out. <laughs> All right. With that fun story to lead us off, what we're going to do first, like, like we've done for the last two parts is that we're just going to talk about briefly what the musical is about, the kind of the main uh, scenes, and then we'll go into the professional critiques and then our critiques. So first off, obviously this, this musical is about the life of Alexander Hamilton and from his time in the Caribbean to his untimely death. The musical first talked about his family family briefly and his coming to New York City and the, and the state. And then it jumps right into his political ambitions and the beginning of his rivalry with Aaron Burr. Hamilton's time as Washington's aide during the Revolutionary War, meeting his wife, uh, Eliza Schuyler, and his social status being questioned, and his law practice, and his entrance into Washington's cabinet as a secretary of the treasury, his rivalry with Jefferson, Madison, and the other Democratic Republicans, the first modern sex scandal in the country, his political career in turmoil and marriage is in turmoil, and then the death of his son and reconciliation with Eliza, and then his supporting of Thomas Jefferson for president, and then his duel with Aaron Burr. So this play is about the same length as 1776 was, but to me, it just goes by so fast, and I think most people can uh, agree with that thing, at that uh, assessment. But we're going to dive into the professional critiques real, real quick. So the New York Times, once again, is one of our reviews. And the writer says, I am loath to tell people to mortgage their houses and lease their children to acquire tickets to a hit Broadway show. But Hamilton, directed by Thomas Kale and starring Mr. 
Maria Randa might just be worth it, at least to anyone who wants proof that the uh, American musical is not only surviving, but also evolving in ways that should allow it to thrive and transmogrify, oh, that's a big word, into years to <laughs> become. And then the, the Chicago Tribune's negative review. I wanted to kind of get two sides of the coin here because some people love Hamilton and some people just hate it. I wanted to get someone's negative viewpoint. So this one is by Lyra D. Montero, an assistant professor of history and American studies at Rutgers University at Newark. And she wrote that Hamilton perpetuates the trend of founder's chick, which venerates figures such as George Washington, while forgetting their slave owning sins as the race blind casting masks this issue. For goodness sake, why are we still venerating these guys? Montero says in her in an interview with the New York or not New York, but the Chicago Tribune. And then she also states, if you had to put all of the slaves owned by Washington, Jefferson, and Madison on that that st stage, they wouldn't fit. I'm not at all shy about how much her how much personally I love it as a show, she adds, but for me, understanding what's problematic uh, about it helps me uh, appreciate it more and helps me understand more what it what is possible. So while she likes the show, she also knows the flaws, which I think that is that can be said about everything that is ever made in uh, music. Musicals, plays, anything has its its good and bad side. So I'm going to go into my review first, and then I'll let Ingrid share her views. So I too like Montiero. I was skeptical. I was skeptical about Hamilton when people first started to talk about it more. I have studied the era of which Hamilton was in, but I'm by no means an expert. Having the historical background helps me uh, appreciate the musical more. I you know how contradicting the, father, the founding fathers can be, but while there are parts of the, you know, the you know, musical that hint at some of their terrible actions, most of the viewers probably don't catch on to those parts. I, d I definitely would have liked to see more of the less glorious side of the founding fathers. I think that's why I like some of uh, the songs that call out the contradicting natures of the, the uh, cast. Jefferson's holier than, than thou mentality in the uh, musical is quite humorous to me since he did own slaves and is somewhat of a francophile, which the musical uh, talks about. I could probably pick a part of the uh, musical until it was no, it was no more. But I, I, I take it as an entertainment value, and it provides a learning tool and a jumping off point for some people that are not versed in history and want to learn more uh, about the Founding Fathers and Hamilton. So that's kind of my take. What do you think? Um, so naturally, me being me, I have a lot of opinions about it. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, Joking aside, um, I do teach a course about the American Revolution. So I'll give a very general review and then I'll get a little bit more specific soon. Um, I also know I don't want to take up too much time considering our time constraint. Um, so as I said, I do teach the American Revolution course and during public history week, um, I want them to learn about you know this time period in a different way instead of it just being from primary sources or lecture. So I often tell them, give them options to watch films or TVs, I'm sorry, TV shows or museum visits, et cetera. Um, most of them end up picking Hamilton, um, probably because one, it's very convenient. You could do it at home, right? If you just watch it on Disney Plus now, or if you listen to it through Spotify or so forth. Um, so often, like I said, the majority of the class will choose this as the option. And secondly, it generally gets pretty favorable, favorable reviews. So as you had noted, you know, it's very entertaining and I'll go into that in a little bit, uh, a little more depth soon. Um, as for some of the critiques, um, like you, I you know, some people are very skeptical. And the one I hear most is about the music type choice. 
Um, and I'll get to that further, but you know, it does have a variety of music. So I don't think that should shun people from not even attempting to listen to it. I would say based on my favorites, it wouldn't be this, the traditional stereotypical rap or hip hop you'd think of when you think of Hamilton. And then moreover to um, the professor's point, it is true that, you know, it sort of um, glosses over, as you had mentioned as well in your post, some of the more hypocritical nature of the founding fathers um, or some of their blind spots per se. Like, for example, you know, Washington for the longest time wouldn't let blacks enlist in the Continental Army, right? Um, just because they were afraid of giving arms to blacks and thinking that they would, you know, provide a slavery insurrection, right? So um, I do think that, you know, obviously they're picking and choosing what they want to emphasize or, you know, describe in the musical and maybe they're only showing the good parts. But I do think things like the cabinet battles really show kind of like 1776, right, that these were complicated people. And for example, like Lawrence, for example, you know, his father was a huge slave owner, um, but he himself was trying to help free them, right, and create black regiments to fight for the Patriots. So I get uh, cr the criticism from both sides. Um, I do think, as you had said, it serves as a very useful learning tool for a lot of people as an introductory piece. I know friends that have seen it and would go like, oh my gosh, I didn't know as much about Hamilton. You know, in history books, we learn about the bank, right, and his, and his untimely death through the duel, and that's about it. Um, so this delves a little bit more deeply into his his persona, um, his beliefs and so forth. So um, I do think it's a good starting point. I've had friends, you know, tell me after watching it, like, oh my gosh, I started reading the Reynolds pamphlet because I just had to know more about it, you know? So it's good that it, it sort of invites people to do that. So um, that's, that's one reason why I love Hamilton. Um, what I will say as well is I do think the ticket prices are a bit outrageous. Um, I feel like they've only gotten more and more progressively expensive every time I went to go see it. Um, and as you had mentioned, you know, uh, someone had mentioned Founder Sheik. Um, like I said, I, while that sort of does perpetuate Founder Sheik, I do think that sort of having a diverse cast, um, as in casting them based on talent versus looks, I think um, when we saw 1776 and Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson, the cast were typically predominantly white. Um, so I think, you know, sort of this approach to diversity and then mentioning um, some figures, such as, like I said, John Lawrence with the, the Black Regiments and Sally Hemings gets a brief nod um, in the second act, you know, and, and the inclusion of themes such as like abolition, manumission, immigration and gender are propelling historical musicals in the right direction. Um, so I just had to see Hamilton when it first came out. Um, like I said, it was a musical, which I happen to love. I'm an art appreciator, as I said, don't ask me to sing ever. Um, and it's about history. So with that intersection, I had to go see it. Um, and like I said, I did have some reservations, especially about musical style and historical accuracy, but they ended up not being deal breakers for me personally, um, since like I said, Hamilton has a variety of music and it is a drama, so you have to take it, um, some of the content with a grain of salt, right? Um, that they would take some artistic liberties. I know some people will say like, well, what about the rest of the Schuylers? You know, they mentioned the Schuyler sisters, but what about the sons? Or, um, you know, what about the other Hamilton children? They only discuss Philip. They only have so much time, right? And they're choosing to dramatize certain parts of that. Um, I would say some strengths of the musical lie in the good songwriting and the witty illusions. Um, so for example, um, in Aaron Burser and My Shot, um, it's literally the set in, set in a tavern, um, which if you know revolutionary history is a very important meeting site during the imperial crisis uh, to share and swap political views and news. Um, in addition to alluding to taking shots of alcohol quite literally <laughs> during the scene, as well as being shot by a gun later in the musical, right in the duel or taking a chance like taking my shot. Um, the rhyme scheme is just pretty amazing throughout. Um, within 10 lines, uh, Miranda rhymes 10 distinct and different words with the word shot. Some examples include, you know, fraught, Lancelot, spot, etc. cetera. Um, moreover, I appreciate the juxtaposition of Hamilton and Burr. I think oftentimes in American history, the only time you hear about Burr is the duel with Hamilton. Um, and I think they do a good job of portraying um, Burr as a complex, sympathetic, relatable figure versus an obscure individual. Especially if you know, um, after the duel, like how he gets kind of busted for trying to create his own empire in the American Southwest, you know? Um, but I think songs like Wait For It and Dear Theodosia remind you that Burr was a human too, and he also experienced hardships, right? Identity crises, um, and, you know, worrying about his family. And I think, like I said, it makes him a more complex or, you know, more interesting character, right? Um, so Theodosia, his daughter for the time, was classically educated. So Burr had very, I would say, progressive views about women's education for the time period that you just wouldn't probably get from a normal or standardized uh, history curriculum. Um, so she knew ancient languages. Um, and like I said, to your final point, I think, you know, between Hamilton's 
musical variety, relatable themes, brilliant songwriting and staging overall offers a rather refreshing perspective on the founding period that hopefully will invite and encourage viewers to keep learning about this time period um, or, you know, figures that were, you know, uh, not featured in history books, for example, like I mentioned, or you had mentioned the Skylers, um, John Lawrence, Hercules Mulligan, and so forth. Um, so overall, like I said, I, I definitely fangirl over Hamilton, but I, I could keep talking about it forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good point, because Hamilton really doesn't get his deserve in the Founding Fathers. Whenever I've seen previous films or, you know, writings, plays, he's kind of on the back burner. The one, I, a couple that come to mind for me is in the miniseries, John Adams. Hamilton's only in that miniseries in two episodes. And then there's a kid's show that I watched when I was, I was younger. It's about the Revolutionary War. It was called Liberty's Kids. It was on like free broadcasting, but he's only in two episodes out of the 40 episodes. John Lawrence makes one. And so I think this musical gives them a higher voice than what they have been in the past. So I would agree with your critique and uh, assessments. Yeah, and I'm not sure it's because um, as the play kind of shows, Hamilton had a very, you know, he's very vocal, so I'm not sure if it's because he was so, such a polarizing figure he doesn't get his due or if he died kind of prematurely, you know? Um, and so we don't really know what his legacy would have been had he lived longer, for example. And it's probably the same with Lawrence, right? Um, Lawrence kind of was a very, you know, unique figure for his time period. Um, definitely, I'm pretty sure he got his girlfriend pregnant before they got married. And, you know, he quickly married her. And then he ended up dying young again, right? Um, so we don't really, so I don't know if it's sort of like this, they died young, so we don't really know what they could have become. Or, um, yeah, I even, in a, um, I have a textbook that I was searching for Lawrence, you know, I think he showed up once or twice out of like 900 pages. And I'm not even sure that Hercules Mulligan ever showed up, you know? Um, so I think they give some attention or they flesh out more historical figures than we would typically get in, you know, um, a history textbook. Yeah, I've only seen Mulligan in one show that I've ever watched about the Revolutionary War. And it was Washington's spies. So he was spying, obviously, in New York. And he's only in two episodes there, too. So I just feel like this musical brings them all to the forefront. But we are almost out of time for our part three. But I believe that we're going to push this into a four-part series here. And so next time, we'll talk about some of our favorite songs. And then do a final compare con contrasting of the three musicals. So thank you once again for coming on to my podcast. I appreciate your analysis. Yeah, thank you for having me. Always good to be here. And we'll see you all next time.